So I'm getting ready to head out to my real estate video shoot that I have this evening and I'm gonna bring you guys along to everything, show you behind the scenes of the shots plus the actual shot and just the workflow and how everything goes throughout this evening listing shoot. But instead of shooting it on my camera because this is the one I actually have to do the job with, I am gonna use the new Insta360 X4 because I can just place it, not worry about composition, but I'm really anxious to see how the AK looks from this little camera. So let's get into the video right now. Okay guys, welcome to the video. So I am just gonna be narrating kind of what's going on and just sharing any bits of information. So <laughs> one of the big things I love about these Insta360 cameras is you can get crazy shots like this. So definitely couldn't do this with any other camera. Okay, so we are headed to a real estate photo and video shoot. Um, really cool thing about this one is it's at sunset, so it should look a lot better than it does during the day. Uh, this is a full campaign package for my business. Me and my photographer are going to tackle it. There's a lot of traffic right now. It's currently 5.30. Start time is at 6 p.m. And we're going to shoot until sunset which is until 8.30. So, I'm gonna be there about two and a half hours. It's over 5,000 square feet, tier five in our package. And yeah, should be really good. <laughs> okay, so just pulled up to the property. It's this one right there. What's up, man? It's been a long time, man. Woo! Good to see you. I know you got the water. I'll get the water. I <laughs> appreciate it. Let's go. Hi. Right, nice, nice to meet you. You look so familiar. Really? Yeah. Social media. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so here I am now setting up. I always do this in the kitchen because you have the counters, and so it just makes it so much easier to balance and check your stuff. I always do this at home. I get my camera balanced and everything, but then I just have to just double check it when I'm at the shoot all of my settings and everything, I do that before going because it just makes it that much easier where I just, you know, put the camera on the gimbal, check the bounce real quick, double check my settings, not have to completely set everything up and be good to go. So I'm gonna be shooting everything with the R5C, 15 to 35 RF lens with the uh, Freewell variable ND CPL combo filter that I just made a video on, really love that filter. If you see the bottom of my gimbal, I have a V mount attached to it. That way it powers the camera all day. That way, especially for some shoots like this where it's twilights and I don't have to be any sort of pressured to have to go back and switch batteries. I just have power all day, so it's super convenient, so. All right, so another new thing I've been doing is actually bringing my R6 Mark II, which was what I was using before the R5C to keep on a tripod for time lapses. And so time lapses for the inside to show uh, the different you know, shadows coming into the home and then record for like five to 10 minutes at a time and speed it up for a clip like this. So I, like an idiot, stepped into my shot, but as you can see, you'll get the effect. Uh, so whenever we have cool shadows like this, oh yeah, when I want to set the camera, you'll see like, yeah, the shadow moves again, whatever you have to do. I got one over here. Okay. So just literally just maybe avoid just that corner. It's on a 50 mil lens. It's uh, Tight. And then I'm just capturing some BTS from this. That's cool. Dude, absolutely, man. Oh, actually, I turned those off just because they're not doing anything other than like adding and another color balance. This overheats, so we're gonna have to time. Oh, okay. The channel here. You know this one right here? Yes. Is that one of these? Yeah, one of those. So here it's what it looks like straight out of camera, C-Log3, and then here's a conversion light, and then here is with just basic adjustments. Nothing crazy other than just contrast saturation and targeting some of those yellow hues to tone it down to look more clean like you would want for real estate photos. Still keeping it really true, as you can tell. I haven't done any color corrections to the behind the scenes, um, so it's pretty close and it looks really good. So. Here I am just getting standard shots, similar to real estate photo shots I would get, just corners and straight on shots and doing short, quick snippets of it. I'm shooting all of this in 60 frames per second, so my clips are really short. That way, when I slow them down, it's gonna still look, you know, the clips are gonna be a lot longer. Recording a time lapse right now because really cool effect when you speed it up. 
uh, to show shadows moving. So right now I am shooting these main living areas inside. Normally I do the outside first, but we just have really good natural light coming in right now. So shooting all of these first, and then I'm gonna do the outside. Okay, so here is the dining room now. So I normally shoot everything, all the outside first, but because we had this really nice light coming in, I'm like, I'm gonna do these inside shots first and then go outside, but yeah. Like I said, these are my favorite types of shots to do, just coming in, revealing a room, adding either a slow pan to it or just do a straight on shot or slider shots. I never try and get really complex and add multiple movements into it. I just feel like it takes away when there's a lot going on. Obviously I understand if it's like a higher pace social media video, but like I said, here it is, here's a straight on shot. All I'm doing now is simply adjusting either my aperture or my filter, but other than that, my ISO is staying the same, white balance for the most part because it's all, you know, same color temperature in this room. And yeah, just getting all the different angles that I can. So corner shots coming in, I'm gonna redo that shot again just because if I didn't feel super confident in it, I'm gonna try something else also. So I'm adding more of a panning to it, you know. That way there's just variety in editing, but I'm also taking, you know, being mindful of not just overshooting at the same time. So, and you'll see here in this kitchen example, I'm revealing kind of like how you would walk into this kitchen. And then I'm gonna do it again, just to get a different uh, perspective. And this one is gonna be really cool because I'm going to actually automate some of the exposure changes with keyframes. And so here I am exposing for this main part of the kitchen, but then now exposure is gonna go down as we enter this room. So I thought that was really cool. Really easy to do, just keyframing the exposure. So it's another neat trick to do. Here's one of the main reasons why shooting at this time of the day is so good. Everything is a lot better balanced. You get window detail, like this shot looks so good. So yeah, absolutely love the dynamic range difference that you can get by shooting either in the morning or in this case later in the evening because sun is going down there's less light outside so it matches more of the inside because i guarantee if this was the middle of the day or like noon these windows would be like you know super white more blown out so really cool that you can see some detail even almost some sky detail but just looks really good and makes it look a lot more professional in my opinion and so love being able to shoot better times of the days like this but so not always possible. So having a camera that has really good dynamic range helps. But So now I'm zoomed in to 35 mil on my lens and I'm getting detail shots. Um, sometimes I'll throw on my 50, but something like this where I'm being raced against with the sunset, I just really want to you know, get the shots that I need and go. But So this is really cool. I'm adjusting my CPL and as you just saw, I was able to completely get rid of those smudges and make the blacks more deep and more rich. So one of the huge benefits of not only being able to cut reflections with CPLs, but also bring back that contrast and deeper blacks. Because here in the BTS shot, you can see it's all kind of smudgy, but didn't look like that in the final shot. I didn't do anything to it. Um, it was just all because of the filter. So another detail shot, just showcasing the flooring and details around the fireplace, just anything else to add to make it more interesting. And I love doing detail shots not to just specifically show any upgrades or features, but to break up the wide shots and make it more interesting, like more upscale, not just a typical real estate video shoot where it's just all wide shots. So especially this dining area was staged nicely, so I wanted to highlight that. But now I'm doing the same thing with the bar built-in thing over there. And just anytime I can use foreground or reveal a space by just hiding it behind something, like whether it's the wall or something like that, just makes it more interesting in my opinion. That way it's not just a really, you know, makes it more interesting as well, I'm trying to say not as boring. So here I am, uh, love when I get light rays like this coming in. This is a good shot to highlight the flooring. Uh, kind of just, it's like a little glimmer on it and it looked really cool. Of course, it started to fade at the end of that shot, but still got it, I think. And then I'm gonna get another angle of the fireplace again, showing that CPL effect. Really cool that we can do that. So here you can see the effect that it does. So deep blacks, it also affects the glare on the floor, but I'm focused on the fireplace to make it look, just to make it look more uh, deep and 
get rid of those smudges that we were seeing before. And then I'm just redoing the shots, making sure I got it. Really easy to do that and just find the one that works. Getting that detail shot of this fixture, you know, things like that, that the agent would want to highlight or see in the video. Entryway shots. So again, I automated the exposure in this where it's a lot brighter and then now it's going to go down and be more of the correct exposure for this room. The editor may or may not use any of these, but for these examples, I wanted to show that you can do that if you wanted to. So really cool. And I'm going to redo it again, but didn't need to show that. Just don't want this video to be super long. So now moving on to the primary. As you can see, the realtor and the seller are just kind of bouncing around. But So I did this one with the light on first, and then you're going to see that I'm going to redo it just because if I'm iffy on like how it looks with lights on or off, I'm going to just get both options, and then I can make a decision in editing. But in my opinion, don't be afraid to turn lights off if it makes the shot look better. Like in my opinion, this looks better than when the light was on. I think it looks a lot cleaner. You know, all the light source is just one color temperature from the windows. I don't see anything wrong with that. I think it adds to the aesthetic of the room, you know, especially how it's laid out and the colors and everything. So again, just getting different perspectives. Got started with the corner shot, now getting a straight on shot just to give my editor varieties. Um, and it's just really simple. All of these are like two to five seconds long, again, because it's 60 frames per second, really easy to just you know, slow it down by up to 40% and then just get the sections that we need. So as you can see, my formula is just before every room, I'm gonna adjust the white balance. So as you can tell from the behind the scenes, it's really, really yellow, but in camera, it looks really good because I adjusted my white balance um, to match that. So most of the other settings stay the same and I'm just adjusting white balance. Okay, headed outside now. It's gonna be pretty interesting because we have a ton of tree coverage and the sun is behind the house. So it's gonna be a little bit harder to shoot or at least to make it look good. See what we can do. All right, moving on to the outside. I was about to get started and take my first shot, but as you can see, kind of hard to tell, but I'm moving the security sign that's usually in front of homes. Just makes it look a lot better if you remove that, a little bit cleaner. And since I'm walking back, I'm just gonna get a shot of that at the same time. So walking backwards, I feel like gives you some of the best or some of the smoothest shots versus walking forward in my opinion. That's why I reduce some shots. You know, if I walk forward and then I walk backwards, do it again as you'll see in some of these examples. That way I just have options if one turns out better than the other. And in this case, I didn't notice that someone walked by, so I totally missed that. <laughs> Uh, one of the good things about having backlit situations like this, while it's not the best for the front of a home, is you get really interesting, more or more interesting visuals with sun flares. I'm a sucker for sun flares and I love shooting everything backlit for all other types of video work, just makes it look a lot better. Um, and yeah, I really like this, the effect that it gives it, just makes it look more of like a film, not just like a regular video shot. But Getting any interesting shot I can see. So there's big trees in the front yard. So I'm gonna highlight that. That might be something cool to show in the video. Again, make it look less like a real estate video, more of a complete film type of thing. <laughs> Always wanna go for that. So now moving on to the backyard, I exposed for the backyard shot. So I exposed for this frame that you're seeing right now and just started inside showcasing what it's like to walk out there and kind of redoing it again just to get a bit of a different perspective, doing a little bit of a pan to it, and then, you know, if we use it, great, if not, whatever. But again, following my formula, straight on shots and corner shots, just, you know, it's so simple that way. You know, don't overthink it. It's really easy, in my opinion, you know, especially when I first starting out, I was like, I don't know what to do. What shots do I get? And it's like corner shots and straight on shots with a little bit of revealing and pan movement just makes it look really good, in my opinion. Can't go wrong with it. I always get behind things, like in this case, behind the tree, behind the branches to reveal certain things. Anytime I can add foreground elements, again, makes it more interesting. Insta360 X4 has been great so far. I love that it's like really easy to do this. I'm not even checking the shots whatsoever. I'm just picking it up, putting it by me and <laughs> moving on. 
head on shot revealing it pool in the foreground looks really cool kind of the best angle that i can get showcasing the whole back of the home and then just moving on over here again revealing stuff makes it more interesting and just whatever looks good composition wise um you know outside i will go to uh pan not just pan only but the other one where you can also look up and down with your verticals and so i'm not worried about that so much and again reversing that shot probably looks a lot better one of my favorite shots funny enough but again this is why backlit sun flare stuff looks so interesting shots like this are really good b-roll shots to have either at the beginning of the video for title stuff just to again break up those wide shots and not just be all regular real estate shots in my opinion just adds more to it drone shots drone shots are tricky for a property like this because it's just all tree coverage so you got to be really careful i'm going to try a little bit of some artsy shots under the trees and then of course get your standard over the over the tree shots So I took my ND off because it's obviously sunset. Can't use auto, even though funny enough I do most of the time, it just works really well. Let's get some cool shots under the branches here. I'm using cinema mode, which is like almost like tripod mode, but that way. Uh, they're slow and steady. So again, now that I am racing against the clock, I couldn't get behind the scenes of this, but here's a good example that I wanted to share showing drone shots that's not just your traditional overhead shots. And you know, I love doing these types of shots for the pool. And then here's your more traditional drone shots, shooting in 5.4K, 30 frames per second. Epic Sky I wanted to catch that. Neighborhood shots like this are really good for titles or beginning of videos, so I always get stuff like that. You hear that? It is time for twilight. Unfortunately, this is not a house with like a bunch of awesome twilight features. But, see what we can get. Okay, now for twilight. So, I'm outside. It doesn't matter how many times I do this, I always get stressed because I'm just racing the sun. But, uh, in this case, just checking my settings, realize I don't need my filter because it's already getting pretty dark. And I'm telling my photographer like, oh look, I think those lights are off. Um, you know, this is one thing that makes it more stressful, but I always wanna make sure all the lights are on, less that I have to do in editing. Obviously I can't correct that for video, but I don't wanna have to Photoshop stuff for the photos. And so we were just waiting for the seller to turn some on. And so here's some of the twilight shots that I got. Um, really tricky it's backlit it's a dark home dark front but just you know exposed for the house and then didn't really worry about the sky or anything like that but yep walking backwards because that shot turned out better corner shot showcasing the big driveway and just you know love how the trees were kind of around it in the foreground or around the photo of it kind of drawing your eyes in and now replicating some of those shots because hopefully my editor might be able to do some cool day to night transitions for them. You know, those are really interesting. So just gonna be redoing some of these and yeah. So over two and a half hours into the shoot, wrapping up with these last few shots and the Insta360 X4 is almost out of battery, but still, still going on and off for over almost three hours is pretty good. So yeah, this is something that's really cool. If you have the opportunity to shoot some of these during the day and at night, you can do the same shot or try to. And then whenever you go in editing, you can kind of like try and line them up. And it's a really cool effect, even if you just do a crossfade between them because it just transitions into a night shot. So trying to remember best how I did those shots and do it again. So one of my biggest pet peeves is when the sellers are home and I have to wait or work around them and so I was just telling my photographer like hey can you tell them to move because I could see them in the window <laughs>
So trying to do some of those same shots again. So I'm replicating a lot of the daytime shots I got to hopefully do some cool day to night transitions for some of these same ones. So here's the last clip I was able to get BTS up and then the X4 died, but I also got shots of the inside. So you'll see those here in the edit. Okay, so I just finished going through the footage from the Insta360 X4 and honestly, I am so impressed by the quality of the image that is coming out of the X4. It is insane. I know that they say it's 8K and obviously it's supposed to be really good, but to actually look really good is kind of different because I remember when 4K cameras were coming out, you know, whenever everyone was shooting 1080p and they would advertise, you know, shoots 4K and it was like, not that good or kind of like older phones that don't shoot really good 4k this is not the case this is like really good 8k quality for a 360 camera so i was just looking through everything right now i'm in the insta360 studio just kind of previewing everything that i shot just the quality looks so dang good and the dynamic range is really insane too i'm gonna now that's one thing that really surprised me. So I can honestly say one of the best things about using this was that it was so easy. Once I got my settings dialed in before the shoot, shooting in 8K, 30 frames per second, auto settings, I didn't have to think about anything. I didn't have to think about adjusting my composition, my exposure, anything like that. So all I had to do was throw the X4 onto the Insta360 invisible selfie stick and add their tripod legs, which is really cool because when they extend, you get this additional support. So really ensuring that your camera's not gonna fall over, had no you know, worries about that. Wherever I put it, it would just stay there, no problem. But it just made it so easy to do that because it just is really hard to capture you know, shots of me doing these gigs because I don't wanna have any sort of distractions and to think about setting up another camera, even if it's my phone, checking the composition, all of that stuff, all I have to do is just place this over there and now because it's shooting in 8K, I know that it's gonna look really good and I can recompose it in the Insta360 studio to how I want it. So just all in all, great image quality and it's super easy to use. So if you're using this for capturing behind the scenes of you or even if you're vlogging like some of the shots that I did in the video where I was just talking to the camera, it has really good audio quality too in my opinion. Okay, so here I am in my studio recording on the Insta360 X4 just so you can compare to how it kind of was on my main camera compared to the Insta360 X4 that has no external mic. Right now on my camera setup, I'm using the DJI mic, but on the Insta360 X4, I'm just using the internal mic. 
But yeah, you can just see that it sounds really good in my opinion, especially for what it is. This would be a really easy solution for content creators, people that want to get into making videos because it's just an all-in-one package. So definitely just really impressed and just the image quality, I can't get over that. It's just such a big upgrade from uh, the previous model, which is right here. You can see that the comparison between them, they're so similar. It is really, really a tiny difference. So I love that the form factor is still really small from the X4 compared to the X3, and the but the quality difference is huge because even though this one, the X3 would shoot 5.6K, it was still not the best looking image versus now it finally looks really, really good. So shooting 8K 360 video makes a huge difference and it's finally to the point where it's on par with like other cameras in my opinion. Okay, now for some drawbacks, only the main one that still comes to mind, which has always been kind of like a big downfall for uh, 360 cameras is just the low light performance. So as I mentioned in some of these shots, you can get really good dynamic range like in the windows, but in the darker areas is where it really struggles. And so low light scenes in the, in the shadow detail, things like that, I noticed it still kind of struggles, but again, it is still a big upgrade from this one, the X3 in my opinion. Um, because I felt like even when shooting outside with the X3, I don't know if it was just doing too much HDR video stuff, it still kind of had kind of like a not so great image. And that's not the case with this one with the X4. Probably the only main drawback, but other than that, like I am just so impressed because this screen is bigger. It looks really good on here. The preview is really, really nice. The battery life was more than I expected. And then overall, the image, again, is just the best that I've seen out of any 360 camera. Uh, yeah, this will definitely be my new behind the scenes camera because that's what this used to be, but this is a lot better. So if you're interested in picking up the Insta360 X4, you can head to the link in my description and also support me in the channel. So leave a like if you enjoyed, comment down your thoughts, subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you guys to be part of the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.